fallout, smoke, women crying for their sons because their sons are not, Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up, free Judea, free our people, autonomy for Israel. You had Herod and Edomite and his dynasty, Herod's ruling, killing any potential threat, any potential Messiah. Then you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we learn from Josephus are not Jews by birth. No. Right. Now look at these. Yeah, I'm telling you, I got to show y'all. A, a, a picture speaks a thousand words. Just look for yourself. And this is the creme de la creme. All praises be to the Most High Yah. Everything we've been through, y'all, the Most High is going to retribute it on all the nations that have had a hand in the oppression of his apple, the apple of his eye, his chosen people, his beloved, his fervent lover, his only begotten. They're going to have their part in the lake of fire. You see them tormented by some kind of creature. I don't even know what that even is, y'all. Judgment in chains. He that led into captivity shall go into captivity. All praise to the Most High God. What group of people have gone through the full extent of this terror, servitude, yoke of iron, a nation with an uh, eagle image, immigrants coming in after them rising up and getting reparation offers, their kids being sold into captivity, you having kids but not enjoying them because they splitting up families, you betrothing a wife but another man laying with her, y'all gotta look at the power of a prophecy prophesied thousands of years ago. Moses was a bad man, but even more bad than Moses was the Most High Yah, the dreadful and terrible Almighty Creator, who prophesied every lick of this on our black behinds, and it came to pass without fail. Now let's look at verse 68. It said, Thou that dwells in the clefts of the rock. Whoa, I know a lot of y'all know about the Caucasus Mountains. Let's just let the word speak. Let's go to verse 4. Though you exalt yourself as the eagle, and though you set thy nest among the stars. What's up, Zion Dynasty? This is your favorite dreaded Israelite, the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. JB Zion. Y'all already know what to do. Show me some love, show me some love, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Zion Dynasty, where your boy's about to hit y'all with another no, with that remix. Banger, all glory, honor, dominion, power, majesty, world without end, to the mighty one of Jacob, the holy one of Israel, the redeemer of the 12 tribes of Israel, the very resurrector of the dry bones of Ezekiel, the restorer of the greatest family, the greatest nation, let's go to ever live on this planet earth, all praises, honor, and glory to the most high, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, and I also got to start things off with peace, love, blessings, and more Israelite power to all my Israelite kings and queens, all my Israelite brothers and sisters. We could not do this without y'all. I will defend y'all to my grave. I love you all from the bottom of my heart, and I really mean that because you guys are like gang gang on YouTube. Like gang gang on YouTube. We taking no. Let's go. Yoruba, Ephraim of the tribe of Joseph, the son of Jacob. I love you guys. You guys defend your boy, you encourage me. And I, and I gotta say, shout out to each and every elder of Zion. When I say elder, y'all know I'm a millennial. So all of y'all that's old enough to be my parents, I'm talking about 50 plus years old, 60 plus, even 70 plus, that are just invaluable. I give double honor to every elder because without you guys' insight and your motivation, you guys have lived life, right? And you have to, we have, Zion, we have to honor our elders. Those that came before us, especially those that's, that's, that are in the truth, that know this history, that know who we are, that know that we're the 12 tribes, because the amount of wisdom that they can supplement and give us, because they're first-hand first witnesses of a lot of this information. Because as y'all know, a lot of these books, they're trying to burn and ban and hide these Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, 
these old books like the Vornay that show white folks going into slavery. A lot of this research and this history, our elders have this stuff, right? Shout out to Bishop Nathaniel of IUIC because without him, I would not have even known about the Vornay. So shout out, double honors and blessings. I bow before all these elders that have set the groundwork for this truth. But not just the elders, not just my Israelite brothers, but all of our Gentile, sincere, humble brothers and sisters, those that are not lost in the goon squad sauce. In the goon squad sauce. Of these urban apologists that went off to these cemetery, I mean these seminary schools, to learn. To be able to learn absolutely business squad. Well, you know, every day to we, you know, whosoever will, let them come how to, they think they're doing God's will by coming against his family, waking up from slumber. How can you love the father but hate the son? How can you love the most high God but hate the children of Israel? Waking back up out of their captivity, awakening as that slumbering lion of Zion, back to their birthright, right? Our, our father loves his children and there's nothing that any of y'all can do about it, these urban apologists. And shout out to all y'all frenemies, all y'all that get on here with your inspector gadget. And I know I'm, I play around with it, y'all because they can't stop this work. Oh my God, they can't stop this because on this channel, we got archaeology, we got DNA, we got old bones, we got oral tradition verified by Cambridge, we got Harvard, Oxford sources that attest to the West African tribes by which the so-called black two continents slapped together like a lonely sandwich that we in fact are the biblical descendants of the ancient Hebrew Israelites. All praises be to the Most High. So on this channel, y'all, y'all welcome. If this is your first time, we're about to go into it. We have been dealing a lot. We, well, we just started our Rothschild Dynasty series where we're gonna talk about the Federal Reserve. We're gonna deal with the most infamous, infamous family of Esau Edom, the royal household of Satan, the synagogue of Satan. And I said it, y'all, yeah, I said it. That family that behind the scenes has owned nations through their big banking, through the Federal Reserve, through the Central Bank of London, we're gonna expose Satan today on with this series. Now this is part two, y'all check out the part one uh, video that is going crazy, y'all are loving it. Um, and this is part two where we're gonna go deeper into the Rothschild influence. We're gonna also bring up a little Ukraine. I'm gonna drop that clip, y'all. We're gonna talk about how this entire Ukrainian incident is all about money, but we're gonna deal with that. So first family, like we always do, we're gonna do a review a little bit, and then I'm gonna drop that part two footage because I was gonna drop it with the part one, but it was gonna end up being like an hour and 30 mm. minutes or like two hours. I know y'all would have loved it anyway, but just for people that, that is a long time to keep people's attention. So I'm gonna drop that other part of that segment where I go deeper into the Federal Reserve, deeper into the history of Amshal uh, Meyer, or Mayor Bauer, who is the father of his five sons, um, the Rothschild name that he changed the name to and, and sent his son to various locations in Europe to establish central banking. So first y'all, we're gonna explain that just as we know we're Israelites, just like we know about the Limba, the Ebo, the Yoruba or tradition verified by Cambridge, the Harvard scholars, the UNESCO authors like Derek Lang, the anthropologist that verifies that the Yoruba are the lost tribes of Israel. Just like our people are awakening to who we are, Satan has a chosen family, just like the Most High has a chosen family, and family we need to know our adversary. The Apostle Paul said, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. A lot of this critical race theory based American, European, NATO, 10 toes of the statue of Daniel, the daughter of Babylon, the fourth beast of Daniel, a lot of this system that has been created has been funded by the dragon. And we talked about that. So first family, let's set the groundwork. We talked about Esau being the last ruling people, the last ruling empire before Yeshua returns and establishes his kingdom. We said that Esau would be a cleft dwelling according to the book of Obadiah, a dwelling in the clefts of the rock, exalting themselves as, as an eagle, people that seek to set their nest in the stars, they will be instrumental in the slave trade. They will be that eagle that we read about in Deuteronomy 28 that will come as swift as an eagle flies, hinting at America, right? This people, this European Edomite descended people would be the last ruling empire. We talked about the statue of Daniel and I showed y'all how the four beasts that Daniel saw in Daniel chapter seven corroborates the statue vision that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, 
had. These are one, one entity. The four beast and the statue is the same concept. The iron legs and the iron mixed with clay toes represents the Roman Empire and the resurgence or the renaissance of the Roman Empire, which is led by America and these European countries that have revived Rome with the Meaning that Rome Edom America, that's gonna be the last one stand. Meaning that Rome Edom America, that's gonna be the last one stand. Meaning that Rome Edom America, that's gonna be the last one stand. That have revived Rome with the mark of the beast. Y'all check out the beast system video when we talked about the mark of the mark of the beast, linking that to Christianity, right? This image of a white Jesus, this corrupted Judeo perversion that the nations would deceive, the European nations would deceive the world using this image. We talked about that, y'all check that video out. But basically, that last beast, that last element of Daniel's statue will be the last people to rule this earth. We link that to America. We link that to the 10 founding countries, the European countries of NATO. We talked about how America be exalting itself as the eagle. We even looked at how Neil Armstrong said the eagle has landed. Not just that. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. landed. Not just that, but we saw that the books that were taken out of the Bible help fill in the missing pieces. Now, the book of Ezra helps unify Daniel's four beasts. That statue helped unify it with Revelation or the Apostle John. The Apostle John in Revelation 13 sees this beast come up out of the sea. Now Daniel says it's a fourth beast that's dreadful and terrible that would have elements of all the empires that came before it, but he does not give an animal. We see in the book of Ezra, in 2nd Ezra chapter 11, that Ezra sees a beast come up out of the sea that is an eagle. So he reconciles, that's why they took these books out, that's why they hid the Apocrypha. He unites the fact that Europe or Rome would be an image of an eagle, that this European, this resurgence of Europe, of, of, of ancient Rome would have the image or the Bible symbol of an eagle, right? So we talked about all that, y'all. So now we're finna go back into the Rothschilds, knowing this prophetic climate, knowing that that last system, that last beast would be linked to America and the European countries. We talked about those two beasts. The first one that comes out is ancient Rome. The second one is this revived Rome led by America and NATO. So we went through all that history. So now we're gonna go back to the Rothschilds and link them to the dragon. Now we read about the dragon in Revelation chapter 12. Y'all check out those videos. I think it's about two of them. Where we talked about the red dragon is responsible for giving power or creating this beast, ancient Rome, and the second beast, America, behind the scenes. That the nations will worship the dragon by worshiping the beast. So every time everybody says, oh, America is such a great country where it's a God-fearing nation, America gets their power, their financial resources from the synagogue of Satan. That dragon, that red dragon linked to the red shield of the Rothschilds. We did, I'm telling y'all, prophecy is amazing. How you can connect the different layers of truth from ancient times and apply that to modern times when you know history. Now the Rothschilds changed their name to Red Shield or Rothschild from Bauer. And we talked about that. So now family, we're gonna jump right back into the review of the Rothschild. So in the last video, we talked about the power that this family has to alter weather, to levy the price of gold, to levy the, the, the taxes on money, and even tell countries when they're gonna print money. We talked about how if you weren't with the Rothschilds and their banking system, that they would fund nations to go to war against you and you would lose and they would profit from the losing team because they would invest their stocks in the winning team or the losing team, then withdraw it at the last second. It's just so much, y'all. So the Rothschilds, determine the money that's printed in these nations with these Federal Reserve Central Banking entities like the Central Bank of London and the Federal Reserve of America. They determine when the money's printed. This is a private organization. This is not a federal subsidiary. This is a private owned banking system that was created by Amr Ma uh, Amshal Maur Bauer, it's weird saying his name, who was the father of the Rothschild dynasty. And he sent his sons into various European locations to monopolize banking by having these exuberant 
uh, interest loans and all this stuff. So we talked a lot about that. I'm gonna show y'all that previous clip that where we showed a brief summary of the Rothschilds. I'm just gonna show a snippet of it. So let's check that out. Amazing video. Today we're finding out about one of the most famous and wealthy families in the world, the Rothschilds. Originating in Germany and France, the Rothschild family have been a significant banking dynasty since the 1760s. Throughout the 19th century, the family could claim to have the largest private fortune in the world, and they developed their banking empire across Europe. At one point, they were said to control half of the money in the world. Not just that family, but I'm gonna show you the clip about the brother shedding light on the tactics that this family, the power that this family has, not just to levy the price of gold, money, tell countries when they're gonna print their own money, they bank off losing sides in war, they determine wars, this brother tried to expose a little bit of that. He was a congressman out of Washington, D.C., I, I believe. I'm gonna show y'all a little bit of that as well. It's been downloaded and shared around the world. The Rothschilds controlling the climate to create natural disasters. They can pay for it and own the cities, man. Be careful. The Rothschilds are an old Jewish banking family from Germany. Even now, they are at the center of conspiracy theories spread on- So y'all, y'all already know how your boy get down. We go through precepts, we have receipts. I showed you guys. Curtis, our colonel, our colonel, Curtis B. Dahl, who was married to the daughter of President Roosevelt, right? And he was also a vice presidential candidate, a lot of credibility, where he verifies that these ish Rothschild have bought out America. We talked about that somewhere between $121 million of American money is going to supply um, these ish people and the Rothschilds is making sure this stuff happens. So we talked about him. Not just that, we refer back to Arthur Kostler and the 13th tribe, how he talks about how modern Jewry is linked to Khazaria. He is an Ashkenazi Jew himself. That's credibility. He lets you know that they're not linked to the ancient Israelites that were a Negroid people. We brought him up, not just him, but the Jewish geneticist Shlomo Sand also sheds light on these modern, the invention of the Jewish people, that they are not linked to ancient Israel, that the Rothschilds have bought the identity of our people while funding the slave trade, which we talked about from various rabbis and various Jewish people. I'm gonna pick those clips up where they shed light that they dominated the slave trade, the Jewish people. We think that the regular white person was just owning plantations. The majority of these families, Isaac de Costa and a lot of them were Jewish people that owned our people, funded the triangular trade route, funded the slave ships. That was the ish people. So they had to invent themselves as God's people while they sent God's people into slavery. This is the synagogue of Satan. This is that red dragon that we said are at least four layers. Y'all take notes. I know I drop a lot of nuggets. There are at least four layers. The red dragon that came against the woman in Revelation 12. Herod coming against Mary, right? Coming against Mary to kill Mary because she was going to give birth to the Messiah. Not just that, but Herod's people, the Edomites, coming against Mary's people, the Israelites, perpetually. But not just that. This red dragon being the synagogue of Satan, the chief family, just like the Most High, has a chief noble family that he used to bring the Messiah and brings his people into the earth, that there would be a war between these families. This is where the Rothschilds come in. They gave power to the beast. Ancient Rome was made up of Edomite people, converts. Not just ancient Rome, but modern America. And a lot of these Europeans get their funding and have their Jewish jury mingle throughout these, these European people to be able to keep our people oppressed and dominate the world through their economy. We looked at Proverbs 22, seven, that the rich is ruler to the poor. And, and this is why I tell our people, group economics, susu mindset, pulling our resources, creating Zion. We can change this stuff, y'all, if we came together. This is how the nations get down. They pull their resources together and that's how they get, they dominate through their finances. A lot of change that we can't initiate as a people is because we don't pull our resources like the early church, like in Acts chapter four, how there was no want in their entire community because they pulled their resources together as a family. I'm dropping that nugget for y'all. If our people would just come together. So the Rothschilds do this kind of bringing their resources together and dominating the earth through finances and controlling the media outlets. 
like Fox and CNN. So we talked about all this stuff, y'all. We talked about in the book, The Creature from Jekyll Isle, that in 1913, this is where Maya Rothschild and his five sons came together, came up with this plan of dominating Europe, and y'all get this book if you can, where they came up with that scheme and they bought off all the politicians, anybody that would get in their way, they kind of just said, okay, you're going to this area, you're going to this area, and they, they initiated their plot to just have these central banks in every European country so that whenever that country needs something, they gotta go to the Rothschilds. Whenever war broke out, they had to go to the Rothschilds. The Rothschilds, they funded everything and created a noose around these nations neck. And we talked about the founding fathers trying to come against this supposedly and John F. Kennedy and all this stuff. America has put themselves in a bad situation when it comes to the Rothschilds and them owning the money. It is a bondage. And when they say that it's not just black and white, but it's green, that is true. But it's also black and white. They put the true Israelites in captivity. That rich family used that identity to enslave the world. So now y'all, I'm, I'm about to drop the next part of this segment and I'm gonna let you guys see how we go deeper into the Rothschild family, how it's all about money, how that this Khazarian, Ukrainian, Russian con convert, Amalek, Edomite people, right? That this family is dictating all these wars just like the Russia war that's going on. They're trying to create a Kazaria part two with this Ukraine stuff. You heard it from your boy JB. So now, without further ado, let's jump back into it. All praise. Also, before I forget, family, y'all check out that Hitler uh, video that we did. The Nazis by Robert Hirschstein. How he talks about how Hitler knew that the true Israelites were a Negroid people. This is the quote that Deshaun Jackson dropped. It's also from one of our family members, shout out to that sister. She said that the original quote was in Mein Kampf about that Hitler knew that World War III would have to do with the Negroes finding out who they are. And I got the book that says how the Germans knew that the original Israelites were a Negroid people. I'm telling y'all. So Hitler was trying to fight against these fake Rothschild Jewish people that were trying to dominate central banking and Hitler warred against them. And that's when they gave strength to America and the allies and that kind of thing to war against Germany in World War II. And also shout out to that elder that is 70 plus that also confirmed that the congressman, the young brother that was saying the Rothschilds had um, had experimented with weather control. There is a 70 year old plus elder on our channel that said, yes, I was in the military and they were experimenting with that stuff then. I'm telling y'all, the links that Satan has in dominating this age through his synagogue of Satan, through the Rothschild Jewish people, the Jewish state that runs America, that runs the news outlets, that runs Europe. This stuff is deep, y'all. So now, without further ado, let's get back into the same let's So let's go into the Federal Reserve. So as you will see, people like Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, um, Powell, who is the present current chairman of the Federal Reserve, these have notoriously been ish Ashkenazi people. They fund the Federal Reserve, they're over the Federal Reserve, they founded the central banking in America and throughout Europe. Let's keep going. So we read in Proverbs 22 verse seven that the rich has rule over the poor. Y'all, we gotta talk about this. This is why our people have to have a nation mindset. The only re reason Satan is able to do this is because our people are not united. So understand, when I see Israelites get on the channel and try to sow discord, it's not but probably like three of them, y'all, but I have to deal with that spirit because there's a lot more of them out there and I gotta speak condemnation to that spirit that divides our people. A lot of people say, oh, well, you know, y'all preaching the hate message, y'all preaching division, understand. If the truth is the truth, we gotta say what the truth is. If our people descend from the Israelites, shouldn't we be about truth? Yeshua said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's not the most high. So people that are championing this history, this, this heritage, this awakening, this DNA research, all we're doing is bringing a destroyed people back together. And I shouldn't even have to explain that. But there are Negroes that have been caught up in the swoo of Satan and the synagogue of Satan and these urban apologists that are set up as religious institutions like the Willie Lynch letter, like the Council of Nicaea, right? 
and COINTEL PRO, the spirit that Negroes are used to destroy their own people, these crabs in a bucket. There is a more sinister family that is trying to destroy y'all's people. And sadly, you got Negroes say, oh, that stuff don't matter. Uh, you know, Israel done away with. When did the Most High do away with his people? So then people like me have to do our due diligence and hem them up using the scriptures, showing in Jeremiah 31, that every time you see the sun, every time you see the moon and the stars and the waves roaring and the strength thereof, the Most High ain't never gave up on Israel. The new covenant, according to Jeremiah 31, 31 and Hebrews 8, 8 says that the new covenant is for who the house of Israel and the house of Judah so then we have to do that to stop Satan from using these Negroes from being brainwashed brainwashed into thinking that they're doing y'all's will by coming against this awakening there is a royal family the Rothschilds that need y'all's people destroyed and we're gonna look at how they funded the slave trade First for that, we're going to go to Rabbi Dr. Mark Lee Raphael and his book, Jews and Judaism and the U.S. Now, in his quote, y'all should see it. It says, in all the American colonies, whether French, British, or Dutch, Jewish merchants frequently dominated. Y'all, I ain't done with him. Let's look at this brother. Now, this brother is actually an Ashkenazi Jew himself. Let's look at the next thing he says. This was no less true on the North American mainland where during the 18th century, the Jewish people participated in the triangular trade. They brought slaves from Africa to the West Indies and there exchanged them for molasses, which in turn was taken to New England and converted into rum for sale in Africa. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, there's so many receipts. And I'm all these receipts are Harvard level, are Eskenazi Jews. I'm telling you, that's how we get down. So the ish people we find out actually funded the slave trade behind the scenes. Yes, we condemn the daughter of Babylon. Yes, we condemn that whore of America that clothes herself in all this power. But understand, America would not have the power to do what they did uh, unless the ish people funded it these jews financed the slave trade right now we see in the triangular trade rate uh trade route that america was interested in slaves europe was interested in in timber and rice and lumber and oil and that kind of thing and africa all those negroes wanted was some guns and some rum liquor and, and don't even get me started on that so the Jews were instrumental in providing each side with what they needed. Why did the Jews fund the slave trade? Their first plot, the Rothschilds had to get rid of the true Israelites. Now, thanks to scholars like Arthur Kosler that talks about them not being the true Israelites, we talk about Shlomo saying and the, um, the invention of the Jewish people. He also talks about it. And like I said, uh, Colonel Curtis B. Dahl, I think this was like five books. Y'all get these books, right? So. We see that most scholars know that these, these are not the biological descendants of Israel. They are not the descendants of the biblical Israelites, but in fact, they are Khazarian converts that have swapped. Now, a lot of these people, like when you look at Arthur Kosler, when you look at Shlomo saying, these brothers came up missing for trying to talk against that family and saying that they're not linked to the people. I'm gonna show y'all that clip with Nick Cannon, Whoopi Goldberg, and um, Deshaun Jackson trying to speak out against these Jewish people. Now, I love what Brother Nick Cannon said. He said they know that we're the people and they covet that thing. This is where when I showed y'all the Vornay, or when I showed y'all um, those white Catholics taking that black baby Jesus, some weird stuff and raising it up, they covet us. They really worship Satan. So y'all understand, we know they really worship Satan, but they have a ritual where they have made a pact with Satan by offering us up as a sacrifice. I'm telling y'all, this stuff gets dark and deep fast so these jews had to take us into slavery let's look at another source our second source is the jews in new spain by dr seymour b liebman now as you guys see we're gonna look at this quote he says they came with ships carrying african blacks to be sold as slaves the traffic in slaves was a royal monopoly and the Jews were often appointed as agents for the crown in their sale. Y'all, this stuff is crazy. 
They were the unseen hand. We talk a lot about America. We talk about Babylon the Great. But Babylon, that new Babylon, that new Roman beast, gets his power from the dragon, which is Satan and his royal family, which are these Jewish Khazarian converts. Now, let's go back to um, the previous uh, Rabbi Mark. I forgot to bring up this quote. In his book, Jews and Judaism in the U.S. in 1983, he says, Isaac de Costa of Charleston in the 1750s, David Franks of Philadelphia in the 1760s, and Aaron Lopez of Newport in the late 1760s and early 1770s dominated Jewish slave trading on the American continent. Y'all, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and be honest real quick. Yes, this war is actually about green. We read in the New Testament that it says the root of all evil is the love of money. These ish people, in order to protect their wealth that is exuberant, I'm talking about $500 trillion, they have constructed ponds. These nations are ponds. America is a pond. A lot of us think that these American regular Edomite white folks owned all these slaves. The Jewish people dominate the slave plantations. Y'all gotta hear me. The Ish people were the major owners of slaves and the major owners of the plantations. This is the unsung history, y'all. The Jewish people were the plantation owners. Woo and we just read about Isaac de Costa of Charleston, David Franks of Philadelphia, Aaron Lopez of Newport. Y'all, they don't teach us this. The Jewish people funded the Triangle of Trade Route. They gave rum to Africa. They gave the lumber to Europe. They gave the slaves and created slave ships. Some of the earliest slave ships were funded by the Ish people. But not just that, in this continent, they dominated the plantations. Now, this is an Ashkenazi Jew that's writing this. Y'all get these books. Now, I'm telling y'all, your boy come with these receipts. So we know they're not the true Israelites. We know they've swapped with the people. Now, let's go back to Herod. Now, we saw that Herod, that great red dragon in Revelation 12, was coming after that woman. Coming after that woman with the, with the 12 tribes crowning her very head, clothed with the sun, had the moon under her feet. But understand, there's a deeper, darker story. That dragon wanted to be the woman. That dragon wanted to be the woman. How do I know that? History, biblical history. Herod was the king of Judea. Now, that's, I'm gonna go into the history a little bit about the Great Swap. This is not new. The Ish people already knew about the Great Swap. They knew that all they had to do was line up in the spirit of their forefathers to continue this war of taking our identity. It started way back during John Hycranus. Okay, let's start with John Hycranus. John Hycranus, during the time of the Maccabees, now this, y'all got it, I didn't done videos about the Maccabees, I'll do some more since I see that this is gonna connect with it, but in the Maccabean era, we know about Judah Maccabee, Judah the Hammer, that got tired of Seleucus and all them Greeks coming in there slinging pork chop bones in the temple. So our people rioted against Greeks, rioted against these Edomite people, and reclaimed the temple. That's where we get the Feast of Dedication from. But the dark thing happened with John Hycranus, who was the descendant of that Maccabean Hasmonean dynasty of Israelites, right? He converted all the Ish people to Judaism. This is where stuff gets dark. We looked at Josephus, that Josephus said that, I gotta speak in code, but only the Essenes were Jews by birth. What was Josephus trying to hint hint? The Pharisees and the Sadducees were Edomites. How did this happen? When our forefather, John Hycranus, converted all of Edom and said, y'all gonna keep these law, statutes, commandments, it gave Edom our history. So over time, the religious leaders were actually Edomites. We looked at Judas Iscariot of Cariot, which was one of the cities, I'm telling y'all this stuff is deep. Judas Iscariot was one from the town of Cariot, or Carioth, which was an Edomite city. If you look at a map, on the southern border of the southern kingdom of Judea is where Edom was. A lot of Judeans mixed with them Edomite people. Judas was actually an Edomite. The Pharisees and Sadducees were Edomites. And Herod, the king of Judea, some kind of way, was an Edomite. Why do I say some kind of way? Rome infiltrated and put their people in these positions of power because they already knew about the Edomites that were already there that had been converts. It's a family orchestration. It's a confederacy. This goes back to Zepho who founded Rome. Those were Edomites. 
and there were Amalek Edomites in the land that our forefathers made keep Torah. So they converted and said, okay, we'll do what you say. And all they did was wait for a pristine moment to swap, get us kicked out the land and the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD, they got us banished, but they remained. <laughs> Y'all, this stuff is dark. And they teamed up with Europe because that's where all them Edomites were, the Khazars, all of them, and ended up setting up this false state of Israel after they sent us into slavery. I'm telling y'all, this stuff is deep. So John Hycranus converted all those Edomites, said, did y'all, and y'all understand, this stuff is interesting because the Most High's will is for us to make the nations keep Torah. But that's why you see, after the thousand year reign of Yahusha, he gonna destroy them. Because when we're ruling during a thousand years and we convert them to keep the Torah, they'll try to swap again. They'll try to wage war, get us killed, get us sent into slavery again, and they'll swap. This swap has been going on since antiquity. Amalek during the time of John Hycranus, the Maccabees, they knew who they, that's why King Agrippa, Paul said, I know that you're trained in all the things of the Jews. Why did Paul say that to King Agrippa, an Edomite? He was a descendant of the Edomite dynasty because King Agrippa was a descendant of King Herod and they wanted to be like us from way back then. So y'all, this has not, this did not just begin in 745 uh, when the Khazars converted. Those Khazars, when you look at history, were said to be the serpent people. <laughs> Boy, that old serpent. They were said to be the serpent people. You had some, some people say the tribe of Dan was mixed with them, but what we do know is they were Edomites that had a long history of knowing how to convert to Judaism and play that game. Now, a lot of scholars say, well, you know, the Khazars converted because they was, was faced with Christianity versus Islam and they chose the mother of both of them. But there was a council meeting where they discussed that this goes back to Edom. This goes back to who we are, the serpent people, this religion. Now, this wasn't who they were, but they converted and they planned way back then. I'm gonna put that on the screen. Let's look at this image of Kate Kazaria. Y'all, this stuff is deep, y'all. We're gonna look at the Khazars. Now, as you see, the Khazars were a semi-nomadic Turkish people that in the late sixth century AD established a major commercial empire covering the southeastern section of modern European Russia, southern Ukraine, Crimea, and Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan? I guess that's how you say it. Y'all, this stuff is crazy. So when you look at Russia and Ukraine, what they're really trying to do, family, is create another reason to create another state of Israel. Oh my God! And you heard it on Zion Dynasty. I'm gonna show y'all a clip. I'm gonna show y'all a clip by a Palestinian exposing what they're really trying to do. Let's look at it. Thank 
قسم منهم دخل مع الصي مع الامريكان والغرب وقسم دخل مع المانيا قالوا اذا انتصر الالمان نحن معهم واذا انتصر الغرب نحن معهم فاكتشف هتلر ان هناك ناس يتجسسون جواسيس فقتل بعضهم ليس كما يشاع ان مئات الالاف وهذا كله كذب الان هناك شعار يطرح ان الـ 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 الهيكل والقدس التوراتي وكذا هي في اوكرانيا وليست في فلسطين وان عجز انا قد بكون لك بكره في هولندا Y'all, this stuff is legendary. Y'all check out the World War III, the Gog of Magog, the NATO, all of that. Let me just give y'all a brief summary of what we talked about that connects to what this Palestinian is saying. Now, the second prime minister of Egypt, oh my God, Gamal Abdul Nasser, said that you left black and you came back white. There will never be peace. The nations, the Palestinians, those people in the Middle East know that them ish people ain't the people. They create political scenarios to justify taking land. That's what's going on. So we talked about prophetically that America is going to get turned on by NATO. I'm telling y'all, we already talked about this. And it's going to happen because of the ish people. The ish people are not trying to collaborate with Russia because a lot of the modern jury are the Khazars. Now, we just talked about that with Oscar Kosler, with uh, Shlomo Sand, Jewish geneticist, Jewish uh, professor, uh, Colonel Car Curtis B. Dahl, who was the, the husband of FDR, the United States president, and the $5 trillion secret, that America has been teaming up with, with the Jewish people. But now... The Jewish people said you ain't doing it fast enough. The beast or the dragon gave power to the beast. But now we're going to see that after the 1,000 years is the Gog and Magog war and all this stuff. This is setting the stage right now with what's going on with Russia. A lot of the, I know this is a lot. Y'all take notes. A lot of the ish people come from Khazaria, which was Ukraine. And I showed y'all that image. Ukraine and um, southern Russia. So now they're teaming up with them to be able to create a new state under all this politics that's going on with the war. Y'all gotta look at how these folks get down. But this was supposed to happen prophetically to lead to America's judgment when all the nations turn against her because she got her power from the dragon and now the dragon is taking his hand off and the Most High is using that to bring judgment. All of them are pawns in the Most High hand. Y'all understand. So America's gonna get judgment and that Gog and Magog war scenario is set up by this synagogue of Satan that's gonna try to make an alliance with Russia. All of this coincides with our people going back to the land, ruling for a thousand years and that, that nest egg, that little serpent seed, that little seed being sown, they're gonna rise up and after the 1,000 years, the Most High gonna boom tune them and then that's gonna be it, the new heaven and the new earth. Y'all check out all these recent prophetic videos and you'll see me go into more detail on it. So let's go back into the history of the Federal Reserve and the Rothschilds. So you get a lot of this history from the creature on Jekyll Island. I'm about to go to page 218 and I'll put that up for you guys to see it where we're gonna go into detail on how this Federal Reserve banking power started. So we see, y'all can see the image of Mayor Amshal Rothschild Bayer. Now his name was Bauer before he changed it to the Red Shield of Edom. Now if you look up the definition of Rothschild, it is Red Shield or Red Sign, right? This has to do with Edom in Genesis 25. And, and when, uh, I believe in Genesis 36, that says Edom was the name for Esau because it represents red, right? Now we see that Mayor Amshal had five sons, Nathan, James, uh, Amshel, Carl, and Solomon, right? Now, he taught his sons how to do the banking industry, right? Now, now, now let me make a quick note. When we talk about the creature on Jekyll Island, this happened in 1913 when this family, Rothschild, uh, Am Amshel, <laughs> Amshel Meyer and his sons, got together to create this federal banking system and they bought off everybody that they need bought off. So on 218, we see that the history of Mayor Amshal. So Mayor Amshal, right, was the son of a goldsmith in Frankfurt, Germany, right? He ended up getting a job at Oppenhauer in Hanover, Germany. And he went from being a clerk at this bank to a partner. After his dad's death, he mixed the gold industry with banking. So he learned a lot about banking from his dad. And when he got the job at Oppenhauer, he applied a lot of these tactics to become a leading banker. And he took his dad's gold industry after his death and merged it to create the central banking concept. And we're going to talk about that. So when you talk about central banking, let me give you an example. 
a lot of different people, okay, let me break this down. If a lot of people just came to me and gave me um, a bunch of money, they gave me hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? I would hold that for them, and whenever they needed an amount, they would come. Now, I would charge them an interest rate, and they were charging like 10% that they would have to pay annually. So this is how the that central banking, this is how America gets down with the loans and the interest and all that stuff is the synagogue of Satan. The Bible tells us to not charge your brother usury. But the ish people said, well, we're not going to charge our own people. We're going to charge the rest of y'all. So they're playing spiritual manipulation and they're ruling a government based on the haves and the have nots using these observant uh, loan rates. Y'all know what I'm saying is the truth. These interest rates and that kind of thing. So they would collect all this money, hold it for people, and a person could never get uh, uh, all their money back. They said, well, you just can't get that. We'll give you this amount and we'll charge you an interest rate. This is what was taught to Amshel's five sons when he got them together on Jekyll Island and showed them how to do the family business and bought off politicians in different countries to be able to send his son to different European places to establish central banking. The Federal Reserve of America is an example of that. It is central banking found by the dragon, the ish people of Edom, that noble family, where the printed money in America is not by the president, it's not by the politicians, it's by the ish folks of the Federal Reserve. Oh my God, this stuff is deep. That dragon gives power to the beast. Let's keep looking at this. So, not just that, but when this banking industry of Amshal and his sons got going, at first they started off giving people money for clothes and shoes and that kind of thing. But eventually they start uh, loaning money to nobles, to kings, to queens, to governments. It snowballed to the extent that whenever wars broke out, broke out, the countries will go to the Rothschild family to get loans for money, for weapons, for the soldiers food, for soldiers themselves, right? All of this funding came from the Rothschilds. Now you see how they ended up being able to decide who won a war and who didn't because they had enough money. We're talking about billions and trillions of dollars to fund one side if they wanted them to win. And if the other side pissed them off, they would go to the other side and fund them to win. They have been getting down like this for a long time, family. Napoleon tried to go against that thing and we see that in the Napoleonic Wars and that kind of thing they made it hell for them basically right so these Rothschilds through their central bankings through their interest rates and loans decided what country won and what country didn't they levied the price of gold that we already talked about they, they, they decided when the country will print money but not just that we talked about they had insider trading they knew which side was going to win because they funded which side they wanted to win. There was a quote by one of the mother Rothschilds that said, if my sons want there to be war, there will be war. If my sons want one side to win, that side wins. This is the power that Satan has. That's why when, when Satan told Yeshua, that if you bow down to me and worship me, I can give you all the earth because I got power over all the earth. Satan materialized that spiritual agenda into a family, a royal family of Edom, the Rothschild Turkish Khazarian people. Let's keep looking. So we see that whatever side the Rothschilds funded, they won a war, right? They operated and opened financial centers all over Europe, a franchise, if you will. Nathan, one of the sons, had the central banking of London. James was given jurisdiction over Paris, Amschel over Frankfurt, Solomon over Vienna. Now, and now, not just him, but Carl was, he set up a Federal Reserve or a central banking system in Naples, Italy. Now, the Roman Catholic Church, this is a side note, when they wanted money, they went to Carl. Oh my goodness. The Roman Catholic Church got their power from the dragon. The false prophet, right? We have the false prophet, we got the beast, we got the antichrist spirit, anti-Yeshua, anti the history of his people, that willingly spirit, the false prophet of Roman Catholicism and Christianity, and the beast of America and the European powers all get their power, their finances, oh my goodness, Mark, from that dragon. Y'all, this stuff is deep. We're going to go more into this in this series, but I'm just laying the, found, the groundwork, right? Now, this all goes back to the spirit of Amalek, like I told y'all. John Hycranus. John Hycranus converted those Edomites. That spirit of these converted Edomites, that Amalek spirit, 
ended up in 745 in Khazaria when King Bulan converted to Judaism, those serpent people, and they set up the, the Jewish state of Palestine in 1948. Now they employed this tactic of big banking to enslave all the different countries that would never go against their plot, their plot. They would never tell them not to do it. They had our people in captivity. They funded that. We saw through the Jewish rabbi, um, Raphael. We saw through not just him, but we saw Dr. Seymour B. Lehman say the same thing, that they dominated the slave trade, they funded the slave trade. A lot of the plantation owners were this Rothschild family, this Ish Edomite people. So they got us out the way, bought out all the European countries so they wouldn't say nothing. And now they determine who wins wars. All these kings are just puppets. We saw that in the original clip. So y'all, this is a lot, y'all. I know it's a lot. But y'all, we're going to continue this series where we're going to go more deep into that Rothschild family just to see how much power they really have and see how the most high is going to tear that dragon out the frame that has you deceived the whole world, sent y'all's people into captivity. We read in Joel chapter 3, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the most high is going to plead with his people against these nations for what they've done to Zion that they sold to the Grecians, funded by the dragon, and this entire conspiracy. So y'all, I hope y'all are excited for this Rothschild series. I hope it's not too confusing. Y'all take notes. Y'all get the creature on Jekyll Island. Page 218 goes into the history of, um, and the whole book really, but um, on, two page, on page 218 is where I showed you guys uh, Mayor Amshah, he changed his name and taught his sons how to monopolize central banking. So y'all, with that, Peace, love, blessings, and black power to the chosen race. Know that when the most high judges eat them, that we got next. We the gods of this earth. Let's go. All praises be to the most high. Yah. I love y'all with the love of the Messiah. Peace, love, and blessings. Shalom. All praises.